Every song has a story. And the carols of Christmas are linked to a world of fascinating legends, ideas, and history. This is the Annotated Christmas Songbook. But listen, it's a contract, isn't it? Oh, sure. We've got a contract, no matter how small it is. Hey, wait, wait. What does this say here, this thing here? Oh, that? Oh, that's the usual clause. That's in every contract. That just says, uh, if any of the parties participating in this contract are shown not to be in their right mind, the entire agreement is automatically nullified. Well, I don't know. It's all right. That, that's in every contract. That's, that's what they call a sanity clause. <laughs> you can't fool me. There ain't no sanity clause. In their heyday, the three Marx Brothers were the most popular comedy team in Hollywood. And everybody had their favorite, whether it be the quick-witted Groucho, the fast-talking Chico, or the unpredictable Harpo. But often forgotten is the fourth Marx Brother, Zeppo, real name Herbert. While his three brothers went on to become comedy legends, Herbert Marx left the act and set out on his own. He machined parts for the army during World War II. He improved methods of providing therapeutic heat, and he invented a watch that monitored heart rates and provided warnings if they became irregular. So Herbert Marx may not have been destined to be the movie star his brothers were, but who knows how many lives he saved. His story was different, but still worth remembering. And so it is with another famous and much more serious trio, Melchior, Balthazar, and Caspar, the three wise men. But there is the legend of a fourth wise man, in a story first told by American writer Henry Van Dyke. And it, too, is a life worth remembering. It is said that many years ago, in ancient Persia, there lived a gifted astrologer named Artaban, whose studies revealed the impending birth of a great king. Artaban resolved to honor this miraculous babe's birth with wondrous gifts. So Artaban sold his every possession and purchased three magnificent jewels a bright blue sapphire, a fiery red ruby, and a pearl as valuable as any kingdom. With these great gifts in hand, he set out for Jerusalem, where it was arranged that he would meet with his fellow wise men. He had traveled for weeks when suddenly he heard a cry for help. He looked to the side of the road and beheld a deathly ill man in a ditch. Artaban was torn. It was nearly the appointed time to meet in Jerusalem. If he stopped now, he could miss his fellow magi. But if he left, the man would surely die. Artaban listened to the wisdom of his heart, and so he dismounted from his horse. For days he cared for his patient, and once the man had recovered, Artaban set out to complete his delayed journey. And so it was that when he arrived in Jerusalem, he found that he had missed his fellow wise men. There was only a message informing him that they had proceeded across the desert to Bethlehem, and he should meet them there. Artaban was anxious to catch up, but he was ill-prepared for a desert journey. And so he sold his bright blue sapphire for camels and provisions to cross the burning sand, and so, with only the fiery red ruby and the pearl as valuable as any kingdom, he set out to honor the king. It was many days before Artaban arrived in Bethlehem. He found neither his fellow wise men nor the newborn king. He finally found the humble home of a widowed mother and her son. The woman told him that the little king and his parents had fled in secret. They had been warned of the anger of King Herod, who had promised to kill every male child in the city. Just as the woman was telling this to Artaban, a great cry went up in the street. The soldiers of Herod were arriving to carry out their bloody orders. The mother had no place to hide her son, but Artaban stood in the doorway, and when a squad of soldiers demanded to be let into the humble home, Artaban assured them that no boy dwelt in this place. 
But for their troubles, would they take this fiery red ruby and move on? The greedy soldiers took the ruby, and the boy was saved. But now Artaban was left only with the pearl valuable as any kingdom to honor the king, and he still had to find the baby. For thirty-three years Artaban searched in vain for the great king. Finally he heard of a great teacher who spoke of love and forgiveness and performed amazing deeds. Now old and penniless, save for his precious pearl, Artaban was convinced that this was the great king he sought. But when he reached the city of Jerusalem, he was informed that the man he sought was to be put to death that very day. Gripping the pearl as valuable as any kingdom in hand, he rushed to reach the execution site, certain he could use the precious gem to ransom the great king. But before he could reach the place of death, his way was blocked by a squad of rough men pulling a pitiful little girl locked in chains. The child was being dragged away to be sold as a slave. Artaban had his last chance to honor his king, but his heart was moved by the horrible sight before him. With barely a thought, he approached the men and pressed into their commander's palm the pearl as valuable as any kingdom. The little girl's freedom was secure. So Artaban's great king went to his death without the wise men ever presenting his gifts or even seeing his face. Artaban fell into despair. He had failed the very king he had hoped to honor. But as he lay grieving, he heard a voice. A soft voice, but one that spoke with conviction and compassion. A voice that no one heard but him. And here's what it said. This I say unto you, whatever mercy you have delivered unto the least of my people, so have you delivered unto me. And Artaban's heart was eased, for he knew that despite all else, the fourth wise man's gifts had been accepted, and he had indeed honored his king. Here's Glynis Price with a song about the very event that Artaban was so desperate to see. The First Noel
This has been the Annotated Christmas Songbook, created and written by David Belke. The first Noel was performed by Glynis Price, with Spencer Krasanowski on piano. Recorded by Danielle Key at Holy Trinity Anglican Church in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Intro music by Aaron Kenny. Outro music by Ease Jammy Jams. Incidental music, The Wandering Soul, by Asher Fulero. The Annotated Christmas Songbook is a production of Holy Trinity Anglican Church and the Acme Radio Project.